Hello and welcome back to Tabletop Tales. Today we will be continuing our previous story. If you haven't seen that one, link is in the description. Go check it out. So, the party is the same as last time. We have Grimlock Ironblood, the Dwarf Fighter Barbarian. Shmi, the gnome bard with the uh, Eastern European accent. Dwinkleritz, the elf wizard. And Otto Erector, the human cleric of Pelor. Played by me, since... Nobody else wanted to play a support character. Twink had finally learned the deadly fireball spell, as we had all reached level 5, and we were playing 3.5 D&D. The adventure today revolves around stopping a band of kobolds who were raiding traveling traitors. The little bastards were particularly aggressive and well-armed. It was up to the party to discover why and stop the raids. They set out upon the road that the raids were happening upon, and loaded down a wagon with a bunch of empty boxes and the like to lure the kobolds in. It worked! and the party met with the kobolds on the road, battling the raiding party. The nasty little reptilian creatures were more well-armed than a normal kobold band would be, which was somewhat strange. There were some smaller ones that carried crossbows, and larger ones that carried morning stars and shields, and were armored in cured hides. They were tough for their size, and only a blow from Grimlock's greatsword would fell one in a single strike. Grimlock's cleave ability was particularly useful in this fight, as he ran in and cut down kobolds like the Grim Reaper with a greatsword. Grimlock had become an able tracker in his time adventuring and had no trouble tracking down the kobolds back to their lair by following their tracks. The party rested nearby the lair and recovered their hit points and spells for the ordeal that was to come. The lair appeared to be an old dwarven outpost, with the door cleverly hidden in the face of a hill. The door wasn't locked, but when the party entered, they found the room was guarded. Six kobolds were in the room, playing a game of dice. They quickly picked up their weapons and challenged the intruders, but one of them began running towards the door at the opposite end of the room to warn his clan. The party was overwhelmed by the wave of five kobolds, one of which was clearly the leader. He was larger and seemed to issue commands, though he had similar equipment to the others. The party attempted to stop the kobold messenger from escaping using ranged attacks, but it was fruitless. He managed to escape with an arrow in his back. The party couldn't make use of fireball in the close quarters here, so once again Grimlock laid about him with his greatsword, chopping up the enemies. Otto smashed them with his morning star. His new abilities as a crusader coming in very handy. Shmi actually contributed with songs of inspiration more than attacks. His buff spells also being very effective. The party dispatched this group of kobolds handily and made their way through the door. It turned out that the kobold leader had an amulet of natural armor, which Grimlock took as a trophy and equipped. The keen eyes of Shmi spotted that this hallway was heavily trapped. The kobolds were known for their clever stonework and trap making. And gnomes, well gnomes know all about kobolds. The two races were ancient enemies in D&D lore, as Shmi was about to uh, experience. He also noticed that the wall next to them was strange. There was a small gap, and it seemed that there were several bricks that could be moved aside to reveal a hole in the wall. This earthen tunnel was quite narrow, but just barely big enough that the party might make their way through. Grimlock was quite broad, as was Otto, and they had the hardest time, belly crawling through the narrow passage, while Shmi was easily able to crawl on hands and knees. The party exited the tunnel after it turned left once, and they entered a larger room than the last. It contained piled boxes and barrels. Up near one end, a small gap between them revealing another door. The party looked about cautiously, raising shields, and getting into a fighting formation in front of the exit as quickly as possible. But as Shmi was exiting, the kobolds sprung their trap. Three kobolds with crossbows popped up from behind cover, raining bolts down on their enemies. Four warriors rushed forward, blocking the way for the group, making it impossible for them to go and fight with the crossbowmen. Grimlock tried to make his way around the enemies, only to discover that the actual entrance to the room, a set of double doors, had a nasty pit trap in front of it, and he fell in since he had failed to notice it in the chaos. He took a nasty hit at the bottom as it was lined with spikes and began to clamor out. Otto fought off the four kobold warriors, while Shmi stepped up and pulled out his shield and his little rapier to keep the kobolds off of the squishy wizard. Twink saw that the situation was desperate, and, despite the confines, used a fireball. Luckily, he aimed it well and torched the crates and barrels, as well as the kobolds hiding behind them. He also did some damage to the warriors, as splintered burning wood was flung across the rooms into their backs and onto the party. Grimlock managed to crawl his way out of the pit, and helped in mopping up the remaining kobold warriors. The party rested a while, using the debris to block up the door that led further into the dungeon, and bound their wounds, used healing magic to cure some of the cuts and bruises. 
They had an ample supply of healing potions, but they began to dwindle after the two battles. They pushed on, clearing the door, and descending a set of stairs carefully. There, they found an intersection. Before them lay another set of stairs, and two hallways to the left and right, each ending in a solid oaken door. The party investigated these two rooms, and found one was a storeroom filled with barrels of dried rations, and a few sets of, unfortunately, blood-stained clothes. The other was an armory filled with pilfered weapons. Large spears and a massive greatsword were among the items found here. It was clear that the kobolds did not have a mage among them, for the party found an enchanted short sword, as well as the greatsword was also enchanted. Grimlock replaced his old one with this new dwarven greatsword, with a very broad, short blade for such a weapon. They took their new swag to the stairs and descended once again. They smelled the room before they reached it. The smell of many creatures living together in an enclosed space. Filthy bedrolls littered the floor, and near a dozen kobolds were here. The largest one that they had seen so far was wielding a sword nearly six feet long. The sight was somewhat comical, as he was half the height of the sword, but he held it in his stubby arms and looked confident. He wore a shirt of chainmail as well, and ordered his forces forward with a roar and draconic. The other kobolds were small and wimpy, unarmored, wielding simple clubs and slings. Some looked to even just be carrying chair legs. But two other well-adorned warriors did stand among the rabble, looking prepared to fight. Most of the unarmored kobolds hung back and threw sling bullets at Shmi, a hated gnome. He was pelted with stones, and the party was quite challenged by this horde of kobolds. They managed to finish them off, though, finally, with some help from Twink's second fireball, as well as ample chopping and smashing from Grimlock and Otto. A large set of carven double doors stood at the other end of the room, but the party investigated another door first, a smaller one, and found in this room several locked chests, inside of which they found a number of useful items. A good chunk of gold, some more food, and, most importantly, three more potions of Cure Light Wounds. These were sorely needed, as the party was just about out of healing magic at this point, and the fight with the Cobalt Horde had taken quite a toll on them. They divvied up the potions and pressed on. They made their way through the large, carven set of double doors after quaffing the potions. And I'll just read you the flavor text that a much younger Manny wrote. <laughs> As you enter the hallway, you feel that the air is slightly colder than that of the last room. That was it. I had very limited flavor text back then. <laughs> A lot of times, I don't even write flavor text at all. I just sort of wing it now. I've gotten significantly better at improv. <laughs> but as the party descended into this winding hallway, they were startled to find a pressure plate was triggered by Grimlock, and they heard a massive crash behind them as a boulder fell from a hidden compartment in the ceiling, occupying the entire width of the hallway and rolling towards them. The party ran for their lives, making their way down the, the twisting stairs as the boulder picked up speed behind them. They rushed to the end of the chilly staircase to find another set of double doors, these ones encrusted in ice, and began to bash on them with all their might. Grimlock and Otto managed to smash most of the ice away from the lock that was there, but saw that there was no way for Shmi to pick the lock without the boulder crashing into them first. So they ran back up the stairs and threw their bodies at the boulder in an attempt to stop it. They managed to do so, but they knew that they couldn't hold for very long. The boulder was incredibly heavy, and it bruised them badly with its impact through their armor. It was only a matter of time before their strength ran out and they were crushed by the boulder along with their party members. Twink and Shmi desperately clawed away at the ice and used torches to melt the ice inside of the lock so that Shmi could pick it. Otto and Grimlock were giving ground step by step down the stairs, their legs beginning to shake with exhaustion. Finally, Shmi succeeded in picking the lock and the two stronger party members charged forward, able to accelerate faster than the boulder, and the entire team smashed themselves against the doors repeatedly. They were still partially frozen together, but the party was finally successful. They managed to smash through the doors, just as the boulder smashed into the doorway. The crash echoed throughout the new room. The party found themselves in a strange place. Four pillars stood in front of them, equidistant from one another, and in their midst was a frozen pool of water. The walls were carven with many images of dwarves and gods, but they were covered in rhyme, obscured as to their true nature. Bones littered the floor, and some bones were sticking out of the frozen pool, as if they had been placed there and then frozen over. The party advanced cautiously, but suddenly a terrible roar racked the room. <laughs> Out from behind one of the far pillars, a creature emerged, as the terrifying roar echoed through the chamber. It was slightly larger than a mastiff, in body, but had great wings spreading from its back. A long, lashing tail, the length of its whole body, extended from its rear. It gnashed a maw full of gleaming white fangs, 
as it charged forward, the white-scaled body of a dragon ran across the ice with ease towards the party. An initiative was rolled. The beast cried out, Your bones will make a fine addition to my collection. The roar had demoralized some of the more exhausted party members, and that was not the only surprise they faced in this room. Two more kobolds, the last of their tribe, hopped out from behind the other pillar, with crossbows ready, and pelted the party. Grimlock attempted to charge the beast, but slipped on the ice and fell on his ass. He cursed in rage at the situation and at his own incompetence, attempting to stand back up as the dragon pounced on him, laying into him with fangs and claws. Otto came up to help, a little more cautious, smashing the beast with his morning star and distracting it. It retaliated using its breath weapon on both Otto and Grimlock, blasting them with frigid air that froze their very skin with instant frostbite. Meanwhile, Twink and Shmee engaged the two kobolds at range with spells and arrows. Shmee used the final bits of his inspiring songs to give the melee warriors a fighting chance. And while Twink and Shmee were not the most capable archers, they did manage to bring down the kobolds and were able to turn their attention towards the dragon. But by this point, the party was badly damaged. Grimlock was in the single digits of HP, and all of the party's healing magic had been exhausted, as Shmi had used his final spell to bring Grimlock back from unconsciousness. Grimlock climbed to his feet and used his second rage for the day. But he was fatigued and was looking very dire. The party was on its last legs. They needed a miracle, and it didn't look likely to happen. Grimlock's player had famously bad dice luck. I mean, I've seen this guy go an entire session without rolling a single number in the double digit on a d20. But but at this critical moment, he rolled a natural 20. The dragon, already badly wounded, went down as Grimlock cleaved its head off, killing it. Proceeded to let out a roar of satisfaction in his rage, and slammed his blade repeatedly into the ice, dislodging bones and coins. Yes, party shone their torches over the frozen pool, and in the ice they saw it sparkled with glints of silver and gold. The dragon had frozen its hoard in the ice. The party did discover a way out, another small secret kobold tunnel, and they managed to haul all of the loot out within the course of about a day. Of course, after a long rest. Grimlock took the skull of the dragon as his trophy, and fashioned a pauldron out of it for his armor. Otto found a lovely new suit of full plate, and the party found a number of other magical weapons among the hoard. <clears throat> it was one of our most epic sessions yet, with a nail-biting conclusion. It looked so close as if we were going to die, but, well, that's how the dice roll sometimes. Do you have any epic tales about fighting a dragon? Please leave it in the comments down below. I'd love to hear it. Also, I have plenty more RPG tales where that came from, so please subscribe and ring the bell to see more from me. Also, check out some of my other content. I do all kinds of gaming and RPG stuff. Hope you enjoyed the story. Thanks again for watching, and have a great day.